Hi there, fourth graders. Welcome to your Making Meaning lesson for today. Um, I'm in a different spot today. If you watched my other lessons, I'm in a different classroom this afternoon. Um, I have been taping up in my daughter's room, but she's taking a nap right now. So um, I am joining you today instead from our back porch. It's kind of sunny out. Um, you can hear the bees buzzing behind me and some birds chirping. I can also hear a garbage truck coming down the street. Um, but it's kind of cool to be outside. I think learning outside is a great place to be. So hopefully you're in a good spot for learning as well, a place where you can stay focused and really do your best, even though I know that can be hard right now. Um, really try to get yourself into a space where you can feel a little bit excited about the learning that we're going to do today and where you know that you'll be able to keep your brain and your body focused as well. Okay, so my name is Ms. Tomasho. Um, I am a teacher at Hazel Wolf K-8 school and I really love reading and talking about reading. So I'm thrilled to be doing this lesson with you. There will be points in the lesson today that I will ask you to turn to your partner or to think out loud. Um, and even though it might feel weird because you don't have a classmate or a reading partner next to you, please do talk your thoughts out loud um, because it just helps your brain grow and it helps your ideas grow. It's a really good practice to use. Um, you can talk to a family member, you can talk to a stuffed animal or a pet, or you can talk to nobody at all. I'm going to talk to this blueberry bush right here next to me. Um, but it is important to talk your thoughts. And I will say that you should talk those thoughts in whatever language is most comfortable to you. Okay, so um, in the last few lessons, we have been reading this book, A Picture Book of Amelia Earhart by David A. Adler, illustrated by Jeff Fisher and published by Holiday House. And we've really been diving into this book and thinking about the important ideas that this book teaches us about Amelia Earhart's life, and then the supporting details that go along with those important ideas. Um, so we're gonna keep kind of practicing that today, but we're going to take it even a step further. We're going to use those important ideas to build something called summarizing and practice what's called summarizing, which is such an important and challenging skill. So we're gonna work on that together today. Something else that we've been working on to take responsibility for our learning is to provide reasons for our ideas. So when we have been coming up with ideas, we've been also saying the reason I think this is. And we're gonna keep doing that today. We keep practicing these things until they become habits. Um, so we're gonna practice today as well. Sorry about the garbage truck noise in the background there. We're going to practice today as well, providing reasons for our ideas. Um, okay, so let's get started. So um, I have this book open, a picture book of Amelia Earhart. I'd like you to just stop and think for a moment. What do you remember from the book about Amelia Earhart's life? Okay, and so I was thinking about that as I was pausing as well. And um, something that I remember is that Amelia Earhart was a pioneer, which means like she was a first person to do something. And um, she was a pioneer in really helping people see that women can do things that men can do. Um, Cause she lived in an earlier time of American history when not everybody believed that. So she was a pioneer in women's rights in many ways. So that's one thing that I remembered. I'm gonna flip through some pages of the book that felt important and just read some quotes to you. And each time I do that, I'd like you to just remember what was happening in that part. So we're gonna go first. I'm gonna to have to move my face here. We're going to go first to this page five, right over here, where it says, the Earhart girl's behavior was shocking to some people. Think in your head for a moment, what was happening in that part of the story? The Earhart girl's behavior was shocking to some people. And then go ahead and 
speak your thoughts out loud, turn to your partner. All right, so I was thinking that what was happening in this part is that we were learning about how Amelia Earhart doesn't really care what other people think about her. She doesn't care if her behavior is shocking because it's what she likes and it's who she wants to be. Okay, the next page I'm going to go to is page 12. And I want to read you a quote from this page also. As soon as I left the ground, she wrote later, I knew I myself had to fly. That's these lines right here. As soon as I left the ground, she wrote later, I knew I myself had to fly. Just stop and think for a moment and then turn to your partner. What was happening in this part of the story? So I was thinking about that as well. And I think that what was happening in this part of the story is that Amelia Earhart, she discovered what she loved and what she felt she really needed to do, which was fly. She wanted to fly airplanes. Okay, the next page I'm going to go to is page 16. And the quote that I wanna to read to you from this page is the last line here when it says, she said she felt like baggage. Stop and think and then turn to your partner to remember what was happening in this part of the story. Okay, and I was thinking that this is an important part of the story, huh? What was happening in this part of the story is that Amelia Earhart didn't want to just be a passenger while somebody else was flying the plane. She wanted to fly the plane herself. Otherwise, she just felt like baggage. Okay, I'm going to skip way ahead now to page 27. And the quote that I want to read to you on this page is this top line here that says, they never made it. So one last time, stop and think, and then turn to your partner to remember what was happening in this part of the story. All right, and I was thinking that what was happening in this part of the story is that Amelia Earhart decided she wanted to fly around the world, even though she knew it was dangerous. And sadly, she did not make it. She, she was lost somewhere on that trip. Okay, so um, we kind of went through the book and we remembered some important parts. And now what I want to do is read you a summary of this story. So this is a page that's in your packets from the district as well, if you have that. If you don't have it, sorry, I'm just trying to make my face a little less present here. If you don't have it, um, then that's okay. You can just follow along with me as I read it. I'm going to read it twice. So the first time I read it, just listen um, to what it's saying. And then the second time I read it, you can listen again and really try to pick up some of the details and listen for understanding. Okay, summary of a picture book of Amelia Earhart. A picture book of Amelia Earhart by David A. Adler tells the life story of the famous pilot, Amelia Earhart. Amelia was born in Kansas in 1897. She wasn't like other girls. She played sports, made her own roller coaster and wore pants. Amelia wasn't interested in airplanes when she was little, but that changed when she grew up. In 1920, she went for her first airplane ride and decided she wanted to fly. In 1932, she became the first woman to fly alone across the Atlantic Ocean. Amelia tried to fly around the world in 1937, but her plane disappeared in the Pacific Ocean. She was never found. Today, she is remembered for her courage and for proving that women can meet the same challenges as men. Okay, so I'm going to read it again. And this time as I read it, just think to yourself, what is this summary of the book do? What is the summary of the book doing? Summary of a picture book of Amelia Earhart. A picture book of Amelia Earhart by David A. Adler tells the life story of the famous pilot, Amelia Earhart. 
Amelia was born in Kansas in 1897. She wasn't like other girls. She played sports, made her own roller coaster, and wore pants. Amelia wasn't interested in airplanes when she was little, but that changed when she grew up. In 1920, she went for her first airplane ride and decided she wanted to fly. In 1932, she became the first woman to fly alone across the Atlantic Ocean. Amelia tried to fly around the world in 1937, but her plane disappeared in the Pacific Ocean. She was never found. Today, she is remembered for her courage and for proving that women can meet the same challenges as men. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you a couple questions now, and I would like you to turn and talk your thoughts to these questions. I would also like you to provide some reasons for the ideas that you give in response to the questions. So my first question is, what does this summary of the book do? In other words, what kind of information is in the summary? What does the summary of the book do? Go ahead and turn and talk and provide a reason for why you think this. Okay, so I was thinking that what the summary does is it just kind of tells you all the important parts of what happens in the book really kind of quickly, right? And the reason I think this is because this summary, it doesn't give all the little details about everything. Like it doesn't say who Amelia Earhart married, doesn't say that she drove a car across the country to move her mom when her mom got divorced, but it does give the really important parts of her life, like how she went for her first airplane ride and decided that she wanted to fly and what she's remembered for. So what the summary does is it just tells us the most important parts of the story um, and gives us the big, like the big important information, not the little details. My next question is, why might you want to read the summary of a book? Why would you want to read a summary? Go ahead and think in your head and then turn and talk your thoughts out loud and give a reason for why you think what you do. Okay, so I was thinking, well, a summary might be useful if you're trying to figure out whether or not you want to read that book um, because it could give you all the important information and you could decide if you're interested enough or not to read it. Maybe you had a different idea, I'm not sure, but it seems like a summary could be pretty important. It reminds me of what you will read on the back of a book when you're trying to decide if that's a book you wanna read or not, that little like blurb on the back. Okay. So now I'm going to read you another summary. This is from Chicken Sunday, which is hopefully a story that you've heard before by Patricia Polacco. Um, and I'm going to read it and I'd like you to think, what did we learn about the book from this summary? Okay, here we go. Summary of Chicken Sunday. Chicken Sunday by Patricia Polacco is a story about three children who want more than anything to buy Miss Eula an Easter hat that she has been admiring to thank her for the delicious fried chicken she makes them every Sunday. They have been saving their money for weeks now, but will not have enough money to buy the hat before Easter. They get blamed for something they didn't do and have to find a way to tell the truth without spoiling the surprise about Miss Eula's hat. The children find a way to tell the truth and also earn the extra money they need by making beautiful Pisansky eggs that remind the store owner of his culture. They sold all the eggs in one day and had enough money to buy Miss Eula the hat. Miss Eula was delighted when the children gave her the hat and the children were proud of themselves for their hard work. Okay, so think again in your head. What did we learn about the book from this summary? And then go ahead and turn to your partner. So I think like just like with the other summary, we learned the most important parts, right? We didn't learn all the little details. Like I don't know what a Fasansky egg is from this summary, but I did learn the really important things that happen in this story, the important things that happen to the character. Um, so that's what a summary is. Summarizing is using the important information in a text to say briefly what the text is about. 
and readers summarize to help them make sense of what they're reading and to remember the important information in a text. We also summarize to communicate to others what a text is about. So there's two important things there. We summarize as we're reading. It's a really important skill that readers develop is summarize as we're reading so we can really hold on to that important information, how the important information is connected. That helps us get sucked into a story and it helps us make meaning and understand that story. And then we also summarize so that we can quickly tell people what something that we're reading is about, what all the important parts are. So they're not just standing there and listening to us go on and on and on and on and on about all the details forever. Um, over the next few lessons, we will learn to summarize together and we will learn how to write summaries like this. So we did a lot today. There is a lot of good thinking that happened today. Today we looked back over the Amelia Earhart book and we thought about the important ideas of what happened in that story. And then we kind of connected those important ideas to what a summary is. A summary again is using the important information in a text to say briefly what the text is about. So we looked at two summaries that had already been written of a picture book of Amelia Earhart and the Chicken Sunday book. We thought about what a summary is and why summarizing might be an important skill to have. In IDR today, you should get ready now for your IDR. So I would like you to read a book for at least 30 minutes. Find a good spot where you can really get sucked into your reading and do the important thinking that you need to do. Hopefully not get distracted. Um, and as you're reading, I'd like you to kind of do what we did today. Think about the important ideas as they happen. Now, this is a new skill that we're working on, so it might not come naturally. So I would like you maybe set a timer or set a certain amount of pages and really force yourself to stop and think back about what are the important ideas that I just read. That's how you're going to get practice with the skill and that's what's going to lead you to become a great summarizer and a stronger reader. There are a couple of questions that you can ask yourself to help you as you're doing this. Um, so you can ask yourself, what seems important to understand in the reading so far? And you can ask yourself, what might the author want you to be thinking about at this point? You're asking yourself those questions and really forcing yourself to stop and ask yourself those questions to identify important ideas. That's how you'll become better and better at this and become a stronger and stronger reader. Okay, enjoy your IDR. I'm gonna go find a good book to read to myself as well um, and practice this skill of identifying important ideas. Thank you so much for sharing these summaries with me today um, and for sharing my learning on my back porch with me. Um, and I'll see you later. Thank you.